I'd like to call the meeting to order. Um, first is to get a financial report from uh, the golf course, Karen. Thank you, Councillor, and uh, welcome to, to mm -hmm. all the rest of the councillors. It's great to see you all here. Uh, so as we get it right into our financials, we, we obviously missed our, our meeting last month. So uh, we have basically two months to go over. Uh, March started late, extremely cold. Weather wasn't very, uh, wasn't very productive to, to good golf. Um, so we ended up um, missing our revenue budget. Oh, actually, we met our revenue budget, but we missed last year over prior. We were about 37K uh, under. Um, but with, with less play means less staffing and less expenses. So we ended up actually positive. We had budgeted a, a loss of, of 69. We ended up with a loss of 13. Um, so all in all, March wasn't as bad as, as it could have been. April, again, the weather, not great. Um, but we did manage to beat uh, budget revenue. And we actually beat prior, um, uh, prior year also for revenue by about 10K. Uh, really good stuff there. Um, Again, weather wasn't great, but we ended up um, actually about 127 more rounds uh, this April than the previous April. So, and uh, we'll see, although May is not in here, um, May was actually very close to prior also. So there's not a huge drop off in rounds this year. Um, our total cash and short-term investments at the moment is at the end of April was 791. Um, like I said, our April revenue was 10K over prior year. Now our fiscal rounds, which uh, year over year, if you look at uh, calendar versus fiscal, you, you get a little different picture. Uh, but in fiscal rounds, we're actually about 3,600 rounds over prior. But that's really the, the COVID really kicked in at that stage. We're looking at that year where everybody was playing golf. There's nothing else to do. Uh, but year over year, we're actually close, like I said, very, very close to where we were at this time last year. Um, so we missed, um, uh, we're missing EBITDA by about 70, uh, 7,800, which is not bad, uh, but a long way behind last year's fiscal uh, EBITDA, which is about 187 at, this, uh, at the same time. Um, and that's really uh, due to uh, rising costs of we're all seeing, uh, let it be in labor, um, our products, electricity, or merchandise in the shop, fertilizer for the course, our food and beverage, or liquor, Pretty much everything across the board, uh, we've seen anywhere from you know, anywhere from five to, to up to fifteen to twenty percent, depending on the product we're looking at. Uh, so, we're, like everybody else, we're struggling to um, to kind of cope with that, and and we'll see that a little bit later when we get into our into our budgeting and how we look at that. Um, so if so, if anybody, if doesn't, if nobody else has any questions, I would um, on the budget or the on the March, April, um, I, I would hand it over to Steve Howard to kind of give an update on marketing. Yeah, one second. Anyone, sure. anyone from the committee uh, has a question on the financials? Not any of our guests tonight have any questions? If not, you could, uh, well, just quickly, Karen. Yeah. So what percentage would you say compared to last year in, in rounds was directly related to obviously COVID. So in that first COVID year, our rounds went up. You know, we went from in the 28th to 29 to like 34, 35. So a huge jump. And we saw it right away when, when COVID hit. Um, even when we were walking only, we were sold out every single day from yeah. opening bells at the end of, end, of, end of the day. And that's seven days a week. We're starting to see a softening in that. The weekends are still really strong. On good days, like last weekend, when the weather was perfect, we were sold out from 6 a.m. until 4 p.m., uh, not a single slot open. Now, during the week, there is you're starting to see some softness in there. It's filled in with outings and leagues. Uh, so the, the, so in the morning, you're busy, and that from 12 to 2, it's a little quieter than it had been in previous years. And then from, from 3, 3.30 on till, till 5.30, 6 o'clock, depending on the night, there's solid league play. So that, that fills everything up. Excellent. I'd say it's anywhere like 10, 10, 12% uh, weekdays and, you know, four or 5%, uh, maybe weekends. Excellent. Uh, just before we move on, Councillor Mahan just entered the meeting just for the record. Uh, thank you. Okay, so up next is a status report 
from the general manager? Well, actually, be Steve Howard's going to take over on the marketing, and then I'll get back in. Okay. Hey, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, Councillor, is it okay if I share my screen? I have a few slides I'd like to share. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Is everyone able to see the uh, picture of Wintonberry uh, in all its Beautiful. glory? Yep. Yeah, it Beautiful. is. <laughs> well, um, I'm really happy and thank you for the opportunity to uh, address everyone tonight. Um, one of the things that I really, if, if you haven't gotten to know me over the last couple of years, is I'm, I'm really focused in on the experience and how we report out on the experience that people are having at Wintonberry Hills. And to me, this is the best I've seen so far. Um, what I'm reporting here is a 78% net promoter score for the month of May and 80% so far uh, for the year. And uh, what I generally like to do is kind of weight Wintonberry against the other clubs that I have responsibility over in the Northeast. And you can see that extensive list and Wintonberry is right at the top of uh, that list for the month of May in terms of overall experience. What that basically means is that uh, we survey our, uh, our golfers and uh, amongst other things on where we can improve and what we're doing well, we ask the question, would you recommend uh, Wintonberry Hills to a friend or family? And that's measured on a scale. Uh, that scale goes from negative 100 to positive 100. So the fact that we're at 78% puts us in that uh, extremely well-run oiled machine in terms of course conditions being right, um, overall experience being good at Wintonberry Hills, interaction with the staff being extremely positive. And just for a point of reference, I took a look at May of 2021. Again, 62% is really, really good. Uh, but, you know, this year so far, um, our average has been well above that. And you can see where we're tracking. It may be a little difficult to see. But starting in March, when play started uh, taking effect based on weather, 71%, 90% in April, and 78% in May. And then when we look online in terms of our overall star rating, uh, which is also part of our reputation management, uh, for the month, uh, we finished at 4.3 with only six reviews, still relatively early in the season. But I like to kind of track this through throughout the entire season as well. And for the year, we're tracking at four stars uh, with, with uh, 12 reviews as of the end of May. So as the season progresses, um, you know, we'll look to increase the number of survey respondents and overall reviews that we typically get. But um, what I did was just capture a few of the sentiment from, from the general public. Resort feel, it's challenging depending on the tees, nice layout. Um, so all good, positive things. Um, and considering all the weather uh, that we've been dealing with through April and May, I'm really, really pleased to report uh, these results with everyone today. Um, what I wanted to do is also just give you a quick app update. Um, through May, uh, generated uh, you know ten thousand, just about ten and a half thousand dollars that can be attributed to the app. Uh, and when we look at the number of downloads, uh, you know we had eighty six for the month year to date, which is down here, uh, tracking just below nineteen thousand two hundred and fifty eight downloads year to date. Um, so again, I like to track the growth, the trajectory throughout the year, and it gives us an opportunity to work with Karen. If we're starting to see something a little bit off, we can pivot and go a different direction. Uh, but all in all, uh, the fact that, uh, you know, people are re-engaging back into the golf community after a long winter, uh, and seeing those number of downloads, uh, increase throughout the year. I'm really pleased with that. Um, and the revenue in terms of where people are finding value in the app, that's where they're, um, that's where the attribution of revenue in terms of people, uh, booking tea times through the app as well. So we continue to push that. I know that, uh, Karen and his staff, uh, stay on top of that and talk to new guests that may or may not have the app and just go through the benefits and features 
that can offer. And then finally, I look at our social media uh, in terms of tracking how many fans, how many posts we're doing, uh, both on Facebook and also Instagram. Uh, for May, we had 20 new fans on Facebook and 11 new followers on uh, Instagram. Um, obviously, our goal is to continuously grow our audience base. So again, I like to track that month over month just to see how we're progressing. And you can see it's usually a slower month, slow start to the year, just based on seasonality and weather. But year to date so far, we have 57 new fans for Facebook and 37 new followers. In addition to that, I like taking a look at what's called post engagement rate. How often are people engaging with our posts? Uh, that helps inform us as to whether we need to uh, maybe differ up our content that we're putting out there. And, um, you know, we have some exciting things that are coming up. Uh, June is actually uh, family go golf month. So it's an opportunity for us to start promoting getting families out on course, et cetera. And, um, you know, we have a whole campaign that we're looking to launch on that as well. So I went through a lot of numbers. Uh, I, I'll pause, but this is the update I wanted to share with everyone tonight. Again, really, really happy with the reputation. I think it reflects a lot of what Kieran's hearing at the, uh, at the counter and certainly what we're seeing online. Steve, I have a quick question for you. Sure. So I, I have the app as well on, on Facebook and Instagram, but I usually have to go to the Winterberry um, Hills um, page. Do you guys, is there a way for you guys to kind of promote that and kind of in a marketing way where it's kind of sending out communication about some of the events that are going on with I know the algorithm is different on Facebook, how it works, but is there something you can do to kind of enhance that? So it's not only sitting there, but it's also reaching audience. So we're referring to the app, right? Yes. That's the basis of your question. Yeah, there actually is push notification capability. And I know that Karen does uh, do that. I think if you're not getting those, you may want to check the setting on your phone. Because uh, people can basically, when they download the app, they'll give them the option to actually turn on or turn off push notifications. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Steve. I was talking about the actual Facebook page. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, there is, a, there is an event section on Facebook that we can upload the events. And if you're part of that audience, um, there is a way to communicate out if you, again, want to opt into that. So depending on how you have your Facebook profile set up, uh, whether it comes up directly into your news feed. So, so that capability is there. Uh, we have utilized that. Karen, uh, Karen, I think you have an event coming up that we actually boosted on Facebook, uh, the White Claw, I believe. Yes, yeah. Um, so we started promoting and advertising on Facebook to boost uh, signups for that event. And then ultimately, we would set up the event on Facebook for people to respond to. So it'll help uh, Karen get a sense of participation. Excellent. Uh, Councilor Mahan. Yeah, I just wanted to say, you know, phenomenal job. It, it's great to hear that uh, that you're hitting 78 percent. That's that's phenomenal. It, it shows that the people that are coming to the golf course are really pleased with the product that you're putting out and the interactions that they're having uh, and the experience overall that they're having at the golf course. So uh, you guys are doing a phenomenal job. On top of it, I also want to say it's encouraging to hear how much you incorporate social media, because as we all know, that's currently where we are. That's the way of the future. So um, it, it was very encouraging to hear those things. You guys are doing a great job. I don't have any questions, but uh, great job, guys. Deputy Mayor. Thank you so much. And uh, Steve, thank you for that report. Um, the good, those numbers are great. Uh, I have a question with respect to the first page that you showed with the, the scores. Uh, do folks have an opportunity to provide comments? And if so, do we get any constructive feedback as to some areas that they would like to see done differently? And if so, could you share some of that? And then finally, I, I should know this, but do we have a marketing branch that already, for example, Sinsbury Farms, I play there every week. I get two or three emails saying, you know, on Friday, there's couples night, there's kids day. 
Did we do that with Wintonberry? We hit all of our email participants on a weekly or you know however often basis. Yeah, so I'll answer the first question. The first question in terms of constructive feedback, I mean, obviously that's really the point of why we want a survey, just so we're getting feedback on what we're doing well so we continue to do those things. And then also if there's an opportunity, let's say there's a pace of play theme that emerges, it gives uh, Kieran and his team an opportunity to investigate and potentially make some adjustments or improvements. Um, so yes, we really rely on a lot of that. And, you know, in terms of looking at some constructive feedback with the ratings that we've seen so far, there's been very little constructive or any level of criticism. Uh, it's been, you know, just a great experience. And for the most part, um, if there, if there has been, for example, here's a good one, uh, right on screen today, uh, uh one of the best maintained golf courses, the greens were fast, well-maintained. This particular individual enjoyed the fact that the greens were fast, but the next, um, you know, review we may get would say that the greens were fast and maybe only give us a three star because that's just not the style that they like to play. So with that, I know, um, you know, working closely with Kieran, we, we take these reviews very seriously. We review them and Kieran actually responds directly to them um, on the median in which they reached out to us. So uh, we, we listen and we try to address where we can address. Uh, sometimes mother nature is um, not in our favor and we get dinged on that, believe it or not, on some of the reviews that we get. So um, yes, so the answer I, to I question, can give, it, give a little example where I had a couple of them complaining about the coffee. So I went out and changed vendors and I agreed with them, changed vendors and, and our coffee's a lot better now. So it's one of the ways... It's very small, but it's another way to keep us, uh, uh, you know, doing the right things for the guests. Awesome. Uh, Deputy Mayor, would you mind reminding me of what your second question was? Yeah, as far as marketing and emails, do we do email blasts to all of our users or players? We do, yes, we do. Um, I, I am I am more on the conservative side where I don't want to fatigue our, our email database too much where what we tend to do is we will have multiple subjects in one email. So we could be talking about, let's say golf, we could be talking about an event and then we can talk about F and B. So we tend to group a lot of our messages into, you know, one message and, and the frequency is a little bit less because Kieran does most of his communication quite honestly through the app. Um, and then we also communicate pretty rigorous, rigorously through social media if there's something in particular like uh, course closure or things like that, we tend to lend more so on emails for communication like that. Um, but we've been doing a lot. I think someone mentioned earlier the focus on social is that that's where some of the marketing dollars is going and, and able to uh, promote and hit a wider reach to get new customers in. But capturing email addresses is a big part of the check-in process so that we continue to use that channel to communicate moving forward. Again, we're not using it uh, in this case as much as, as frequently as once or twice a week for sure um, because we wanna make sure that the messages are really targeted and then also make sure uh, at the same time, make sure they're broad enough to where it's going to appeal to more people and have less of an opt-out situation where people no longer want to receive communications anymore. So it's a balancing act. Okay. Thank you. Mayor, see you have your hands up. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Steve uh, and Karen for that report. Karen, I haven't forgot about you. I got to visit you soon. Um, my question was on this slide as well. So, you know, these are, this is really good data. It's really good to see that, you know, we're leading in the pool of uh, data that you do have available, but I do recognize that this is the data that you have um, available and I don't see, or is there, or has there been an initiative where we can compare ourselves to like the best of the best, right? I don't see Tumblebrook, Gillette and Keeney where I understand that's outside of your scope of, you know, data that you have on hand. But, you know, as, and, and I understand like a lot of that is, you know, private owned or municipal um, ran or what have you, 
But, you know, I would like to see our amazing golf course be compared to, you know, the other showstoppers, not to say that not to knock any of these other golf um, courses, because some of them are good. And I played some of them. But, you know, is there an initiative to kind of compare ourselves to the best of the best um, in the future or on some of this data on some of these metrics? Because I really would like us to, to plan against kind of the top ones as well so we can continue to stay um, kind of in the forefront and continue to win these amazing awards that we already have. So that was kind of my question slash comment, but thank you. Well, thank you for that. Uh, as far as MPS, that's a difficult one because that's a, a course level and very specific survey um, that is going to be proprietary to that particular course. One thing you can do is compare it to online reviews, which uh, that's generally open to the public. So Golf Advisor, uh, Google, Facebook, you can get a sense of where the competitors um, are ranking in terms of what their online presence can be. So we actually, um, we have this tool that allows us to take a look at, you know, what our online, uh, I guess, you know, comparing exactly to what you were asking about, Mayor, where um, you, can, you can easily see how we rank compared to some of the, our competitors. So the online review is more public, especially as people are researching and deciding where they wanna spend their golf dollar. Uh, they are doing that comparison. So you're absolutely right in the sense that, uh, you know, there is that, that comparison going uh, amongst competitors, whether we list them as a competitor or not, the public is looking at where they wanna have the best experience and where they wanna spend their golfing dollars. Um, just quickly, I think you mentioned, um, and this is through year to date. I'm sorry if I'm looking away. I'm actually looking at my other screen. But like Blue Fox Run, for example, they have a four-star rating uh, year to date on Google uh, with 10 reviews. And Winton Berry Hills, just on Google, has a 4.6 uh, with five reviews just on Google. So, yes, uh, a long-winded answer is we are looking at that comparison. But MPS, unfortunately, these big numbers that I'm showing you here, those are going to be uh, more internal. And uh, we share this, obviously, with all of you, but uh, we wouldn't necessarily be sharing this with um, our, most of our competitors don't share it amongst each other. It's not like a database we can go and look at. I hope that answered your question. Yes, thank you so much. Okay. Any other questions from committee members? All right, I'm gonna move on. Karen? I think you're on mute. Yep. Yes, yeah, so from there, I would like to introduce Dennis Petrozelli, our new superintendent. Uh, hello, Dennis, say hello to everybody and give hello, us everybody. your updated report. Welcome, Dennis. <laughs> hello, everybody. Nice to meet so, you all. Um, Started at 18th of uh, April, so a little over a month now. Uh, trying to get settled in, trying to see uh, what was left behind for me. Uh, Mark McMaster did a tremendous job. And Mark's an old friend of mine. And uh, Greg Du Bois before him did a tremendous job growing the golf course in and maturing it. So he's an old friend as well. So I'm following some good footsteps. They've done some really good work there and I'm hoping to continue building off of that. Um, we all have different perspectives, uh, different experiences in our, in our careers uh, in this business. And I'm looking to just keep utilizing my strengths to keep making the golf course better. So that's, that's pretty much in a nutshell. What I've been doing is just doing a lot of evaluating, uh, shoring up some things that I think are weak, uh, trying to tweak a few things to optimize efficiencies and cost effectiveness. And uh, also thinking not only today, but down the road on how we can make it better. So that's, uh, that's my day. <laughs> Excellent. Any, any questions? Any questions for Dennis? Deputy Mayor. Thank you, and Dennis, welcome to the team. I know it's been a short time, but can you share, I guess, some of your priorities or any um, 
maybe greatest challenges that you've noticed uh, thus far with respect to the course? Um, I would say the, the environmental conditions, uh, first of all, uh, being an open golf course as a, an in, inland links style golf course, that's a first for me. So I'm used to working in a parkland type style where every hole is tree lined. So you have a lot of wind breaks. Um, you also have a lot of opportunity for uh, searing sun, microclimates that heat up areas. Uh, so every golf course I've worked on is somewhat different, but this is by far the, the biggest challenge environmentally with such a wide open golf course. Uh, I've already experienced a few times now how quickly it can dry out. And uh, I, I'm trying to develop programs and management practices that will help uh, manage that a little better. Um, keep the turf healthier, a little stronger. Uh, it's still trying to develop different ideas and trying to be a step or two ahead of the uh, possible drying out condition that happens. Um, so we're, we're working on that. That's a, a daily challenge. Um, another big concern is trying to get the golf course as prepared as possible before the heat sets in the summer. And that primarily is the challenges of the irrigation system, trying to make sure it's as good as it could possibly be. Uh, it's going to be 20 years old and uh, they don't last forever, but I'm doing my best to make it as best it can be, as efficient as it can be, and uh, trying to be uh, conservative with the water supply that we have because we don't have an endless supply of water. Uh, we have to be careful what we use and just be very uh, conservative with it. So the stronger we can make the turf, uh, the less water it will require. And just there again, just trying to develop these management programs to make the course and the turf as strong as it can be to handle these different stresses. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Any other questions for Dennis? All right. Thank you, Dennis, for that. Um, uh, we're going on to old business irrigation um, pump update. So I don't know where Dave probably is going to jump in here and give us an update on the RFP for the for the pumps. Yes, sir. So I met with Matt Bauer back, Ryan and Karen um, sometime in early April. Um, meeting with them, Matt was able to provide us with the specs working with DA, DAS or DAF, I'm sure, I can't remember, um, one of the, the two. Um, so I have the specs for this. Um, I have not had the opportunity to write the RFP yet, um, but I am in the process of um, planning on doing this within the next week or so. So hopefully we'll have this out by the end of the month. So that's the update for there. I do know that it's a long turnaround time from what I understand. They're, you know, you're talking potentially six months out. So it is a priority for me to move forward with this. We just lost Dave. Oh, you don't have me? Yep. Hello? See you, Dave. Yep. Can you see me? Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Okay. Did you hear? I'm sorry. Did you hear any of that? Mm -hmm. I got it all. Okay. Yep. Okay. So that's what the plan is, is to hopefully have it out within the next week or two. Don't know what happened there. Just got kicked out. I'm back. I don't know if that was Dave. Technology. But, um, <laughs> so Dave, quick question. So with the irrigation, what are we looking at? You said six months out. So we're looking at sometime in the fall. So I would hope that it would be somewhere in that time frame. I can't specifically answer that. That would be cool. I would need to work closer with both Matt, Dennis, and Karen to when the actual installation were to occur. At this point, you know, the best thing for me to do is to move forward with the RFP. Once we get that and we, we obtain the vendor and the services to move forward, we would then develop the timeline. All right. 
Thank you. Any questions from the committee for Dave? Anders? Okay. Thank you, Dave. Uh, we're going on to new business uh, discussion regarding fiscal year 2022 uh, 23 budget. Yes, sir. So I'll take, obviously take that. So, uh, first of all, I did forget to, I should have mentioned that uh, Mr. Phelps is a uh, was tied up this, this afternoon as a prior engagement. So unfortunately he could not make tonight's meeting. Obviously he would like to have been a part of the discussion. So in season here, I will start off. So what was sent out to the committee, uh, I always start off with um, our, our out year pro forma when I start to look at budgets. So I'm looking at, at uh, overall big picture over our last uh, last year, one and Karen, two prior. Yeah, sorry. Karen, do you Kieran, do you mind by any chance just sharing uh, if you have any sure. material there so the public who is looking could sure. follow or any other committee members who don't? Yep. Please. I have to figure out how to share. Share. <coughs> share. Here we go. Okay. Will everybody see that? We can see it. Thank you. Okay. So yeah, I start off with with a, a overall picture where I'm looking at um, what, uh, obviously my proposals the last twelve months, one year prior, two year prior, and then the average over over the last few years. And it's it's broke down by category: green fee, car fees, driving range, activities, or past sales, which some will call members, but we don't have members. We we have past holders. And pro shop sales or food and beverage, alcohol, uh, and there's some service, some clinics. Some our dues, which is our again, which is our our our, our pass sales, were for our advantage card sales, which is different than our pass holder, uh, which we've since got rid of in the last couple of years. We no, we we determined there was no no real use to do a discounted card. Uh, here's our our pass holders, our annual membership fees. It's in here, but we call them pass holders. And then any small miscellaneous uh, income from there. We would look at cost of sales, how much it costs to, to bring in the merchandise into the shop, how much the food cost, and obviously our liquor and any beverages. So obviously soft drinks. Uh, labor go down through the lines with labor, golf, G, um, general, the general administration labor, golf course maintenance, food and beverage. And uh, that's pretty much in labor. We look at our benefits and so forth. And then we move down to our bottom line which is are gonna be our golf operations expenses, GNA and all the way down the line, uh, coming down to our final line, which, which will show me my total expenses right here, uh, average over the years, what I, I intend to see uh, going forward. And then our EBITDA, which I would, you know, which would come up with, uh, you know, obviously bottom line uh, number. So once this, once I start to put it together, obviously I'm looking at a, a bigger picture to see where every line fits. Um, and with that, obviously, now there's there's uh, we just talked about all the the rise in expenses uh, that we're starting to see. So I'm trying to start the budget this year um, for, for for some of those things. So, uh, like I said, Dennis is doing it in in maintenance. He writes his own budget there, uh, and he's starting to see we're starting to see electricity, uh, diesel, gas, um, everything affected, uh, including food, merchandise in the golf shop. It's little things where we saw, you know, a, a, a baseball cap that we sold in the golf shop for $25 is now $34 just because the cost of the cost of sales has gone up so much. And the other part in the labor is even minimum wage has gone up so much. Uh, it doesn't just affect the minimum wage uh, employee. Uh, we have employees who are making a little bit more than minimum wage. And now the, now a newcomer coming in the door is making the same as them. Now I have to bump them a little more. So it's not just a minimum wage. It's, it's everybody down the line. Um, I'm, I'm sure you're seeing it in the town and all, in, in all areas too. I'm sure Dave and so forth is going through the same kind of thing. So from that, I generate uh, our, our budget for the year. And I'll try and make this a little bigger so we can see it. And this will be broken down the same line items, but month by month. Um, and I will look again, when I'm, I'm creating this, I'm looking at what, what we did uh, revenue wise in each different category over the, over the previous year. And this runs all the way obviously through June. 
to get to that final number that we just saw in the in the, in the pro forma. So same lime items all the way down. Cost of sales, labor, operational expenses. What are total expenses and for each month resulting with our EBITDA for the year. And it shows our running EBITDA throughout the months suggested or projected for the 2002-2003 year. I don't know if anybody has any particular questions or want to go Two through. Things. What is the what's the total EBITDA? Uh, yeah. Projected EBITDA is 102 to 56. So a profit okay. of just over of 100 100,000. How many how many employees do we have at the the golf course Karen? Height of season management down. Yeah. Uh height of season close to uh we'd have you know usually about 10 in um maintenance uh in golf, we have about 15 to 20. A lot of people are working one to two to three days a week. And in food and beverage, the same thing up to about 20. So we're close to about 50, the height of season. Okay. Uh, thank you. I know this is a lot of information. And I know we received it uh, a week ago, but uh, I'll give folks an opportunity to, if they have any questions now, or we can come back. Uh, the next meeting. Any questions from the committee or uh, any of our guests today? Anyone? Okay. All right, Karen. Nothing else from me for now. Okay. Uh, so if, if that's been said, I think we can go to uh, the next uh, item on the agenda, which is discussion of overflow parking. And with that said, yeah. when I look at our events this year, I think this is where we start the discussion. So in previous years and for a number of years, pre-COVID, most of our events were purely golf related. Um, this year, we have more events than I've booked ever before. And I think it's a lot to do with our tented facility being outside, but we have 15 events that are non-golf. Um, so our parking lot, again, is good for golf, but when we have an event where we have golf and uh, a separate event, that'll be a bridal party. We have a wedding this year. We have a retirement party coming up here in a couple of weeks, double shotguns where the, our parking is is now shows it's definitely not efficient, at least 15 days a year, which means that we're, we're lacking that additional parking. So I I spoke with Dave and we started to get the, the kind of, uh, um, uh, started getting the wheels turning here to see what we can do. We have this, this uh, lot next door, what needs to be done to start to use it for some overflow parking. Dave, do you wanna? Yep. I'll be happy. To, I'll be happy to chime in. So Karen and I actually met with uh, DPW, Dan Carter and Bart Rickson last week to review the property to see what could potentially be done in-house um, versus bringing in a, 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 a private contractor. We do believe that the best uh, action to level it off to make it so that it's suitable for to handle vehicle traffic would be to bring in a contractor um, to move a little bit of earth around to level it off potentially bring melons in and then um, stripe it for the short term. Um, in addition to that, I also met with the director of um, building and land use, um, Jen and uh, the new zone and enforcement officer to see what, what we needed to do. Since this is technically in residential area, um, we did get an opinion from the town attorney. If we were to move forward with any type of overflow parking at this area, we would need to um, go in front of TPZ. So as a result of that, we are in the process of putting together a site plan, getting price quote in order to um, to make that a suitable area. Once we have a full plan in place, we will then make that, um, you know, we'll bring it back to the committee, see what the committee would like us to do. And then from there, we would go through the proper channels to move forward with this. Um, so I do think that the process isn't, you know, a one or two month process. You know, we're looking a little bit down the road. 
Um, but it is something that we do feel we can be able to do um, the relatively limited costs for the time being until a larger plan was developed. Dave, what's the projected amount of additional parking spaces are we gonna acquire from this lot? Do you have that by any chance? Karen put together a little site plan for us. Um, and Karen, do you, do you recall how many spaces that you that you counted out into that area? You're on mute. You're on mute. Yeah. I wanted to be conservative when I was putting that plan together. I think it can uh, ultimately, you know, it would hold a lot more, but I think we could probably hold about 40 cars in there. Yeah, that sounds about accurate. And what we were also looking at, in addition to the park in its answer that, you know, potentially, how are we going to get into it right now? Are we going to come in off the Terry Plains Road or are we going to open up a curb cut off of the parking area um, up of Wittenberry Hills? Because now there is a white fence between the property. Now that the house is no longer there and the town owns that property, that fence is not necessarily needed. So there will be discussions of potentially removing that fence as well and open it up directly. Um, a curb cut from the parking area, which may be, which TPZ might um, find favorable. Thanks for that additional. So uh, Karen, so with that additional 40 spaces, would that suffice what we need with the overflow of what we're seeing right now with events and weddings, would that kind of help with I, I that would probably suffice, you know, yeah. for because that's what we're, we're we're lacking probably when we have a double shotgun or something like that. There's there's probably fifteen or twenty to, to thirty cars parked along the side of the road, and I think you, you take that thirty cars, put it in there, and okay. you know, you know, we're, we're satisfies our needs. Excellent. And then, to be totally honest, now I can really start to market heavily heavier in um, the events that are non golf. And the, the other good news is that. All of the events are Bloomfield residents that are, are, are using the, the facility, which is the best news of all. And, and on that note, do we do we do marketing with the major um, companies within Bloomfield, Cigna and so on? Do we kind of go out there and meet with, with them and try to promote having events at the course? We, we have in the past, some of the major companies when they have open houses, We'll do demonstrations. I'll bring in some of the golf stuff and the KVAS and just to uh, introduce the, the golf course to some of these larger, larger corporations when they have that kind of uh, uh, opportunity to go in. And actually, it's usually during lunchtime uh, and we'll have some of our flyers and posters that we'll give out. Okay. We'll try and get them in there, give them, give, give them you know, a free range ball, just anything to get them to the golf course so we can introduce them to the, the course. It's, it's, since it's out of the way, it's not on the main street. There, you know, a lot of people don't even know the golf course is there. Correct. Excellent. Deputy Mayor, you had your hands up? I did. I just had a basic question. How many current parking spaces do you have at the course, Ken? I knew it was going to get it, I guess. Uh, at one stage, I did know that. Uh, at the moment, I, I, it, uh, I'm not sure. I think it's in the 70s, 70 or 80. Okay. And, and this, I have a, a comment or question that's sort of outside of what you were talking about with the finances, but you talk about there are a lot of people who don't know where we are, right, as far as where the golf course is located. And one of the things that has come up, I think, is the average citizen here in town is most concerned about taxes and roads. And one of the things that we want to find out as a council is how can we best support the golf course? as far as informing and educating the public and the council about its importance for the development of the town, to market the town. And I think that we really need to think about sort of a communication plan to regularly get in front of council uh, to share some of the information about the state or national awards and the recognition so that people can better appreciate what Winton Berry Hills Golf Course does for the community. And I think there's a disconnect. And, and I think part of the job for the, the council members, at least, is to try and bridge that gap. But I think it's going to take some help from you and others to help us spread the word uh, and to help people better understand why it's important that this course succeed, right? And how can we best support you? So I, I just think that 
particularly with the major pro uh, projects. I, I don't think it's enough to come up just before it happens. I think we have to sort of lay the foundation and let people know in, in a year this is going to happen in various stages to just kind of get a communication plan because uh, for those who golf and know the golf course, it's great, but I think there are a lot of folks in town who really don't know much about the golf course and how important it is. And I really think that we have to inform and educate folks about, you know, the things you do and sort of boast about the greatness of the golf course. Uh, you guys received a lot of uh, recognition, uh, local, state, national, and we got to get that out there so that people know more about it. So that's just a general, general thoughts about how I think we need to really inform and educate uh, not only the council, but the community so that we can better support you. Those are those are great comments, Deputy Mayor. I think part of it is, is that there's this misnomer that the golf course is this um, exclusive club. And believe it or not, a lot of folks think it's a private club within Bloomfield. I get a lot of that from folks. So I think it's um, I think it's important to get that communication out. Another uh, in talking marketing, another way to you know to highlight some of the um, the benefits of the course and and for folks to be more engaged in is I would say put uh, once a month or whatever the case may be uh, uh, something in the messenger any promotion that you're running you know I think it's a very cheap way to to get some some messaging out there about the course uh, so I would recommend that uh, uh, <clears throat> so any other additional comments from the committee before we go on to any other business? And so I just have a just brief other business. I'm actually working with this, um, not working. I just, I was approached by a gentleman, this company in regards to how could we get young folks involved in playing golf within the town. And I think that's a great way to get buy-in with uh, residents. If you, if you have a son or daughter and they're playing golf, that means you're at the golf course, either at the restaurant grabbing something to eat while they're out doing a clinic or two. So I think it's, I think it's imperative that we find a way how to get into, um, get into, get into the golf course, uh, to get folks to come out to the golf course. We get out to the schools, we promote, get kids engaged, try to have some sort of um, bridge between bridge between the um, sorry but that was my thought here bridge between you know the gym classes and having some sort of clinic activity bring in golf to the schools and getting our students involved in the technical aspect of the the game fundamentals and I think that's a great way to draw those future golfers into onto the course to play. So I'll have something probably next month to present to the committee uh, and to get your buy-in and see if this is something uh, plausible. Obviously, it's something that we'll have to get other source of, you know, revenue in a sense, getting companies involved within the town to support our youth to get them out on the course. Um, so, but that's it for me and I'll uh, open it up for any other uh, comments or any other business from committee members or if nothing else, uh, we'll move on to um, public comments. India, anyone from the public would like to? Yes, um, Mr. Yeah. Mr. Berman, hold on one second. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> My name is Robert Berman, 8 Hiram Lane, here in town. Uh, the late Frank DePippo was a strong supporter, of not only the golf course, but all kinds of activities for children. He was a minor league baseball player. He taught golf. He taught baseball. He was involved in soccer. He did an awful lot of things within this town. His family and a lot of his friends would like to make a donation and they wanted it at the golf course. And the thinking was to have a, a bench 
on the somewhere on the golf course, and Mr. Wilcox and I had thought the ideal location for it was the top as the fifth tee box. Uh, anybody who's walking the course by the time they get from the fourth green to the fifth tee box, they could use a little break. And we thought that was an ideal location. I understand why the committee is reluctant to go ahead with, with more benches on the course. Uh, precedent has already been set, but I understand reluctance to continue in that vein. I would like to suggest, because I really would like to do a bench, there's a possibility of a bench in the front, at the entrance to the golf course. Uh, when you're facing the entrance to, to the clubhouse, uh, right to the left, there's space there and a bench there would not be a bad idea, I would think. So I'd like to suggest the committee consider that as a location for it. The idea of paving stones around the uh, putting green and that kind of thing uh, is not that favorable in terms of what the family had in mind. So I just would like to make that suggestion. That you could, I would appreciate if you would consider that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Berman. Dave, is there a process that Mr. Berman can go through to fill out a form and submit it to you and then to the committee for discussion, consideration as how we move forward with this? There, there is. So Mr. Berman actually filled something out for us last year. I have been working with him or having discussions with him. Um, since the form has since been updated, um, I will send something out over his way for him to update the form so then that we can review it in front of the committee. Excellent. So thank you for that. Um, my internet is a little spotty, so forgive me. Uh, any other public comments? We had a um, comment in the chat by Dr. Biffer. Um, his comment was, the meetings of the subcommittee are so refreshing, focused, thoughtful, and intentional. A number of the other subcommittee meetings are scattershot and focused authenticating and posturing instead of conducting honest, serious business. Congratulations to you all for honestly and honorably and intelligently working on behalf of the town. I enjoy your meetings very much. Thank you, Mr. Biffer, for those comments. All righty then, any other comments from committee members or anyone? Uh, Councilor DeBethan Brown, anything, any comment? Deputy Mayor? Uh, Mr. Berman raised the issue of the benches, and I know that that has come up. I recall last year hearing about that, and I just wanted to hear from the golf course what either the policy is or do we currently have benches on the golf course in memory of others, or are there plaques on benches? I just don't know enough to even have a, a real opinion on it. We, we currently have one bench on the golf course, which was installed about five or six years ago. Um, there was, there was at the time there was a lot of, um, uh, it was 50, 50, whether it was going to happen or not, but it was decided to put the, the bench up there and the, there's been a lot of, 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 uh, of discussion about it, another bench and there is some resistance to putting, you know, if you put another bench, we, then another bench and another bench, and then it becomes a, there's some golf course out there that have you know, 10, 12 benches. So where do you stop? So, um, you know, for, as a management company, we don't have a, an opinion. It's more so, you know, what you guys want to do. We'll, you know, whatever, whatever you guys want, we'll, we'll take care of it. Yeah. And, and if I may, Mr. Chair, I, I just think it's a really difficult issue. I've seen in other golf courses where you have to pick and choose from really qualified individuals who you might want to put a bench out for. And where do you draw the line to say one person is more deserving of the other and, where do you stop and start? And so I just think it, if there was a policy, I definitely would like to see it. And, and I think it's going to require some really good conversation and discussion around that because it's, it can be a really difficult thing with pick and choose whoever gives the most money or is it based on popular? There's just so many uh, criteria, I think, that can go into that decision. Excellent comments, uh, Deputy Mayor. Uh, I agree with you. I think this was just a, my my point was just to get it going. I think anyone can come before the committee and propose anything. I think, Dave, if you could refresh my memory, uh, I think someone came earlier in the year, and I can't remember if it was a bench or 
um, a plaque, but I don't think we made any decisions on that. Uh, it just went away, but I know there were resistance from members of the committee. Uh, and I know that uh, the members of the council on serving on this committee did say, we would like to go through a process in hearing from, from anyone that would like to either have a plaque or, or a bench or whatever the case may be. And you kind of have to weigh uh, the pros and cons and you're absolutely correct. Where do we stop? How many benches and, and how do we choose which individual? So it's very difficult. Um, so, but I think going through the process and, and, and giving everyone um, an opportunity to present their cases, I guess what we do as, as public officials, uh, our custodians of, of this asset that we have in town that's here for everyone. Uh, Council Mahan, your hands are is up. You have yeah, the floor, just, sir. Just a further, thank you. Just a further comment on, uh, on the discussion at hand. You know, we, we did have a conversation earlier this year and uh, a process would be great so that we can determine how exactly uh, we go about this. Um, and, and even if we have a process for, for follow-up, because as you said, you know, we had a discussion about that person from earlier this year, nothing came of it. And uh, there wasn't really any, I, I'm not sure what the conclusion was from it besides, you know, the, the conversation didn't really move anywhere. We, we did discuss, but I don't know if a, a finite decision was made. Um, so, and, and please feel free to correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong or, about that. Um, but, but yeah, I think, you know, a process would be healthy. We kind of already opened up the floodgate for consideration of benches when we installed one uh, four or five years ago. Uh, so now we, we almost have to um, consider uh, in all aspects. I'm personally, I, I understand that, you know, the mass installation of benches can be problematic. Um, but I guess that as um, the chairman stated, uh, uh, Councilor Curtin, you know, that's our job to determine from there. Thank you, Councilor. Uh, Dave? You're on me. Yep. Okay, yep. Just to touch base on that. So this is the same request um, from Mr. Berman and, and Mr. Wilcox um, you know, from previously in the year. So what I actually recommend, so originally we thought that this may fall under the memorial gift donation policy because um, that, that, that pertains to all town properties and parks. After giving it more thought, I actually do, I would recommend that we come with, up with something proprietary to Wittenberry Hills Golf Course, a specific policy. Um, we did meet with Karen, Ryan, Matt, um, and, and Mark Manser back at, at the time. Um, we'd like to, if we're going to do something like this, we'd like to have it centralized in one location and um, in one location only um, as part of our memorial gift donation policy it specifically states that, you know, if you're going to add something to there, it needs to fall within the, the park plan or, or you know, for, for future consideration. Um, so if you want to put a bench there, the bench already needs to be provided or, you know, spec'd out um, at that, that location. So my recommendation would be for us to develop a specific policy for the golf course, work through this committee. Once it's adopted, then we would be able to finalize this process. Excellent. Thank you, Dave. Okay. Um, with that being said, is there, uh, Kieran, I have to say, I think council. Uh, you locked up there. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I said, just look out for her in the, the golf course. I think when she was mayor, she hit the first tee shot, and I think yeah. it went uh, 250 yards. Um, I don't know if backwards or forward, but I know it went. Slight draw. Well. <laughs> okay. And anyway, uh, thank you, everyone. Do I have approval of minutes from the committee? Motion to approve minutes. Motion. Second. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. The chair votes aye. Do I have a motion to adjourn this meeting? So moved. 
All right. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful evening, and I will see you next month. Have a